Unit three, the woman that never dies. Read about it. There is a photo mounted on my wall of a woman I've never met, and its left corner is torn and patched together with tape. It's the late 1940s, and she hasn't yet reached the age of 30. Her light bronze skin is smooth. Her eyes still young and dynamic. She is unaware of the lump growing inside her, a lump that would leave her five children motherless and also give rise to the breakthroughs in medicine. Beneath the photo, a brief description says her name is Henrietta Lacks, Helen Lane, or Helen Larson. No one knows who snapped that picture, but it has appeared an infinite number of times in magazines and science textbooks. I first learned about HeLa cells and the woman behind them in 1988, 37 years after her death, when I was 16 and my biology instructor mentioned her in class. I've spent years gazing at her photo, wondering what kind of life she led and what she would think about her cells living on forever. They were bought, sold. Packaged and shipped to laboratories around the world, which helped with some of the most tremendous advances in medicine: the polio vaccine, chemotherapy, cloning, gene mapping, and in vitro fertilization. There's no knowing exactly how many of Henrietta's cells are alive today. One scientist estimates that if we could pile all of the HeLa cells ever grown onto a scale, they'd weigh more than 50 billion kilograms. Another scientist calculated that if we could lay all of the HeLa cells ever grown end to end, they'd wrap around the Earth at least three times, which spanned more than 350 million feet. Henrietta died in 1951 from cervical cancer. Before she passed away, though, a surgeon took samples of her lump and put them in a petri dish, regardless of the absence of her consent. Scientists had been trying to keep human cells alive in culture for decades. But they all finally died. Henrietta's were different. Her cells reproduced an entire generation every 24 hours, and they never halted. They became the first immortal human cells ever grown in a laboratory. Henrietta's cells have now been living outside her body far longer than they ever lived inside. Many people believe that they were one of the most notable discoveries in medicine in the last hundred years. However, little did they know about the woman. Years later, I eventually traced a few magazine articles about her from the 70s. Ebony quoted Henrietta's husband. All I remember is that she had this disease, and right after she died, they called me in the office, sounding eager to get my permission to take a sample of some kind. I decided to reject them. Jet said the family was angry, angry at the doctor's improper deeds, and angry at the publication of articles about the cells without their knowledge. The family felt that they were exploited and that they were suffering a nightmare. The articles all ran photos of Henrietta's family. The descriptions that the family had found out just a few months earlier that Henrietta's cells were still alive, whereas at that point she'd been dead for 25 years. Then I hit on the idea of writing a book that was a biography of both the cells and the woman they came from, someone's daughter, wife, and mother.